Lansing's only sports station. The game, 7.30. Let's play. And a pleasant good evening and welcome to another exciting night of high school basketball. Here on the game, 7.30 a.m. WVFN, brought to you by Doubting Industries and by the Lansing Sports Commission. I'm Brock Palmbush, and we got a good one tonight here at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium on the campus of Sexton High School. It is the Orioles of Charlotte High School against the J-Dubs of Sexton High School. Charlotte 6-1 and one overall, Sexton only 3-4, and four, but both teams are 2-0 and oh in the CAAC White, so therefore they're playing for the league lead as we get close to the halfway point of the season. Eric Doc Love will join me here uh, very shortly, and we'll, do, we'll talk to him and get his thoughts on tonight's contest for the CAAC White lead. Charlotte at Sexton, more coming up after this on the game 7.30 AM WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. WVFN. Rock Palm Bush, Eric Doc Love here at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium on the campus of Sexton High School for a big CAAC white matchup between the 6-1 and one Charlotte Orioles and the 3-4 and four J-Dubs of Sexton. And you look at the records and think, well, these two teams aren't really that even. But look at the conference records. They're both 2-0 and oh right now, getting close to the halfway point of the season. So this is for the league lead, and therefore it's an important game. Uh, yeah, and you look at the record for the J-Dubs of Sexton right now, Brock, at 3-4. and four, uh, Look who they beat their last ball game. They beat Flint Beecher, one of the perennial teams in uh, the state of Michigan, in Division Three now is what they mm -hmm. are. Uh, they beat them 75-54, so beat them by 21 points uh, back in December on Tuesday, Tuesday the 19th. Yeah, both these teams have been off for uh, quite a bit, so maybe some rust. But I got to tell you, when we talk about Sexton, I've been Brian Calloway from the Lansing State Journal. He's here tonight. He's been telling me about this kid, and I'm glad to get a chance to see him for the first time. I'm talking about sophomore Keyshawn Somerville, who had 21 in that game against Flint Beecher. He had 19 in a win against Olivet uh, the same week as that game as well. Uh, he's been fantastic for the J-Dubs uh, all year. Uh, only a sophomore, like you mentioned. And uh, he's been wonderful for uh, Coach Dalian Deering and uh, Sexton and their leading scorer every single time uh, so far this season. As for their opponents tonight, the Orioles of Charlotte, they are the uh, Charlotte, the defending CAAC white champs. They were 9-1 and one in the league uh, last year. Their record will be different this year because there's two more teams. They're playing more uh, league games this year, 14 league games, as a matter of fact. And they're led by the uh, two-headed monster of Ben Buzzard and Cutler Brandt. They've been good all season long. Yeah, Cutler Brandt uh, been on this uh, varsity squad for a couple of years. Ben Buzzard himself, a couple of seniors for this team. Uh, they haven't played since December 21st uh, when they beat Ovidelsi at Ovidelsi, 48-33. Yep. They've actually won six straight ball games at the Orioles. They lost their opening game in overtime to Fowlerville and then won every game since then. Uh, yes, they have, and uh, that's, uh, yeah, they've, they've gotten it going for Coach Tom Fleming. Head coach is Tom Fleming in his fourth season for Charlotte. Sexton, coached by DeLeon Deering. Uh, he is in his first season. Doubting Industries presentation of high school basketball brought to you by the uh, Lansing Sports Commission. No matter the sport, the Lansing Sports Commission can make your next event your best event. Plan on something greater. Find out more at lansingsports.org. And by Doubting Industries, Jeff and Chris Metz. If you're wondering what your future holds and you're not going to college or found out uh, college isn't for you, uh, check out the future that skilled trades can offer you. You'll be surprised. Check them out at DoubtingIndustries.com. Uh, Doc, taking a look at some of the other action around the mid-Michigan area tonight. East Lansing, who's just wiped everybody out yep. so far. Number one in the state in some polls. A lot of people really love East Nearly Lansing. Nearly all the polls. <laughs> and we're going to see East Lansing next week. Next Thursday when they play Waverly for the first of two and possibly three times uh, this season. East Lansing hosting Grand Blank tonight. Holt is uh, hosting uh, Coldwater. Fowlerville hosting uh, Pinckney. Uh, Olivet is at Ionia. Eaton Rapids is at Catholic. Stockbridge at Leslie. St. John's at Mason. St. John's played a heck of a lot better. Uh, they had just won the uh, Reed City Tournament over the holiday break, so very good win there. Durand is at Ovid Elsie, and Lakewood is at Portland. Portland, a surprise team uh, as well uh, on the boys' side. They've only got one loss on the season as well, mm -hmm. as they are 5-1. and one. Taking a look at the girls' action tonight, well, there isn't as much, uh, any, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as many games uh, tonight. Fowlerville hosting Pinckney, Coldwater at Holt, Olivet at Ionia, Eaton Rapids at Catholic Charlotte beat Sexton 49-29 in the girls' game. 
uh, that just finished just before we went on the air. Stockbridge at Leslie. Uh, Morris hosting Burton Atherton. Duranda undefeated over at Elsie. And Portland, who's undefeated, and they go to Lansing Catholic next Tuesday night in the premier girls game next week. They host Lakewood. So that's the action that is uh, going on tonight. A lot of CAAC white action tonight for the most part uh, for both sides and then not so much else in the other conferences uh, right now. The red and the, and the blue and then the CMAC. Yep. We'll talk about uh, more of that, about that coming up later on in the uh, broadcast. But Tip time is upcoming. We'll take a time out and come back. The uh, starting lineups and the opening tip of Charlotte at Sexton after this on the game 730 AM WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. I An excellent rendition of our national anthem before the game tonight between Charlotte and Sexton. Both these teams 2-0 in the CAAC uh, white. So they're playing for the league lead. And we've got the starting lineups for you. For everyone out in Radio Land, Eric Doklove has them for you now. And I'll start with the visiting team, the Charlotte Orioles. Uh, in the backcourt, a, a senior 5'11", number three, Cutler Brandt. Uh, sophomore 6'1", number 10, Evan Koloski. Uh, three forwards tonight, three forwards. Uh, senior 6'2", number two, Carson Burkampas. Senior 5'10", number five, Malachi Garza. And senior 6'3", number 14, Ben Buzzard. So two Burkampas, three Brant, five Garza, 10 Kalaski, and 14 Buzzard. Uh, for the Sexton J-Dubs, uh, a sophomore number one, Keyshawn Somerville. Sophomore number three, Marquise Murray. Senior number five, Joseph Pizzo. Senior number 11, Devon Hodges-Smith. And junior number 32, Dequarius Jones. So one Somerville, three Murray, five Pizzo, 11 Hodges Smith, and 32 Jones. The head coaches, DeLeon Deering in his first season for the uh, Sexton J-Dubs, Tom Fleming in his fourth season for Charlotte. Keys to the game tonight, well, I had a chance to talk to both coaches before the game. Coach Fleming for Charlotte told me, attack, use our athleticism. He also says that this is the first of a three-game road swing for them as they got Sexton tonight, and then in the next week or so, they got Ionia and Olivet on the road. So he called it a gauntlet, so he says any road win is big. He's exactly right. Yeah. As for Sexton, Coach Deering told me, want to control the rebounds, really want to play as a team, and W-I-N in capital letters, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, win. This would be a big win for Sexton. Uh, they can get this, even though if they win, they would have an overall 500 record, but they'd be atop the CAAC White. That'd be big for them. Yeah, it gives them a game advantage over Charlotte, obviously coming in for the conference, and then, yes, get you to 500 and get you on the way in 2024. So we've turned the calendar year, and it uh, gets a good start for them. You know, they haven't played since the 19th of December. It's been a while. And it, we'll see how the things work out for them, but it will be a good win for them here at home to get things kicked off. Do you think rust will be a factor for it, either of these teams? It could be. I don't think it's going to be like you would see like week one of the regular season or you know early in December or end of November or sometimes um, where teams will kind of be like, eh, have some issues to start. But I think they'll be a little rust, but I don't think it'll be too bad. All right, here we go. Sexton in the home white uniforms with red numerals and black trim. The... Uh, Charlotte Orioles in their alternate black uniforms with orange letters and numerals and white trim. Jumping center for Charlotte, number 14, Ben Buzzard. Jumping center for Sexton, number five, Joe Pizzo, the team's quarterback. Sexton from right to left. Charlotte from left to right. We're ready to go. Eight minutes are on the clock. There's the whistle. Tip one by Charlotte. So they'll get the ball first. Here they come. Here's Buzzard. Buzzard over to Malachi Garza. 
Buzzard in the right corner here to Brandt. Brandt double teamed, man-to-man -man defense here. Buzzard to Brandt, thought about a three, now driving baseline, gets it into the lane to 14. Buzzard, layup is no good. Rebound comes away to number five, Joe Pizzo, and we got a whistle and a foul. It's gonna be on Burkampus, Doc. A little matchup zone, it looked like to me, Brock. I don't know if it was quite man-to-man, -man. maybe it was a match, I don't know. I think the guys were playing off a little bit, but nevertheless, a good shot attempt from Charlotte, but a better defensive rebound. Devin Hodges-Smith over to Marquise Murray. Murray in the middle of the lane to Dequarius Jones. Pass underneath. That's Joe Pizzo. Nice cut to the basket, Doc, and it's 2-0 Sexton, and now a steal. Here's Marquise Murray. Shot up, no good. Rebound scrummed for, it comes away to Burkampus for Charlotte. 2-0 Sexton, and now Charlotte throws it away into the Sexton bench. 7.06 to go first quarter. Sexton leading Charlotte, 2-0. Like uh, the Orioles came on a little 2 3 zone out there, but uh, J Dub's easily able to move the ball around and get an easy bucket out of it. Nearly got another one after the steal, too. Here's Somerville. Somerville to Hodges Smith. He's got it again, nearly traveled with it. Middle of the lane to Jones, middle of that zone. Here to Jones, puts the shot up. That's no good. Rebound tipped out of bounds over to Charlotte. Sexton moving well without the ball as far as passing it back and forth and finding open space between in this zone. Full court press here for Sexton. Trying to go long. They do. It's to Buzzard. Buzzard throws it away again. It's taken by Dequarius Jones. Here comes the J-Dubs. Here's Pizzo. Offensive foul. Looks like uh, Malachi Garza got back there defensively and took that charge as uh, Pizzo was rushing down there after the steal. 6.35 to go first quarter. Sexton leading Charlotte 2-0. Trying to break the pressure again is Charlotte. Nearly turn it over. Here's Cutler Brandt driving baseline. Gets into the front court. Shot up, no. Tipped around. Scrum for. And it comes away to Charlotte. Garza got it back. Garza gets it back. Give him credit for the rebound. Here's Evan Koloski, number 10. In the corner to Brandt. Brandt, 16 footer in the corner. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Aquarius Jones. Outlets to Marquise Murray, lost the ball momentarily. Back to Somerville, deep three, that's no good. Rebound comes away to Buzzard for Charlotte. Good look, just went in and out. Six minutes to go, two nothing. Sexton leading Charlotte. Charlotte will kick it back out and they will reset. Malachi Garza with it. Two three zone, kind of a matchup zone. Yep. Here's Cutler Brandt, double team over to Koloski. Evan Koloski around to Garza. Trying to figure out this zone. Left side, Koloski. They're looking for spots. In Gets it. inside to Buzzard, and he threw it away. Oh, able to save it is Burkampus. Threw it away again, but they're able to recover. And now they'll reset. Here's Brandt. Deep three. Yes. Wow. Way outside. That was a 25-footer, folks. Three to two, Charlotte. 5-12 to go first quarter. Here's Dequarius Jones, a 16-footer in the middle of a zone. No good. Rebound comes away to Koloski. Here comes Charlotte. Malachi Garza. Banker, no. Rebound. Comes away to number three. That's Marquise Murray. Here come the J-Dubs. Somerville with it. Three to two, Charlotte. 4.48 to go first quarter. Hodges Smith, left side. Jones, middle of the key, gets in the lane. Puts a shot up, that's no good. Rebound, comes away to number five, Garza. Here's uh, Cutler Brandt again. Cutler Brandt in the right corner, right in front of us. He knocks down another three. It's six to two. In favor of Charlotte, 4.22 to go in the first quarter. Here's a ball that comes out to number three, Marquise Murray, and he puts it up and in. It's, excuse me, six to five in favor of Charlotte. Yeah, they haven't updated the scoreboard yet. Still says 3-3. Three, three. 4.05 to go, first quarter. Up ahead to Cutler Brandt. Brandt drives, shot up, nobody's fouled. A nice decision to drive that one. Took a baseline. Marquise Murray, the foul, his first, the team's second. Scoreboard says six to six, but it's six to five. Yes. A couple subs are coming in after this free throw. And, that, and now the Brant 
Hits the free throw. It's 7-6. Seven, 7-5, seven, rather. Oh, we got a sub here. Number two, Hurley Young for the J-Dubs. Who's in there now for Charlotte? Uh, looks like number 24, Tyler Bowser, the sophomore. There we go. Second free throw is up and good. They've got the scoreboard corrected. It's 8-5, to five, Charlotte. 3.56 to go. First quarter. Here's... Number one, that's Keyshawn Somerville. That shot is up no good. The rebound comes away to Ben Buzzard. Here come the Orioles. Cutler Brandt, up, oh, dribbled it off his foot, out of bounds. Good defense there by number 11, Devin Hodges-Smith, forcing the turnover. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Got the quick hands out there, knocked the ball into Cutler Brandt, who booted it out. Somerville across the timeline against the Charlotte zone. Right side, Murray. Hodges Smith, back out to Murray. Three-pointer, yes! His second three of the game. We're tied at eight, 324 to go, first quarter. Trying to break the full court pressure. Cutler Brandt throws it away. Oh, they're lucky to be able to recover it. Yeah, it bounced off a Sexton player and it went right back to Cutler Brandt. Malachi Garza, middle of the key to Buzzard. 12-footer, that's no good. Rebound comes away to Hurley Young for Sexton, Hodges Smith with a driving baseline, whistle, held ball. Yeah, trying to drive it baseline towards Cutler Brand, or into Cutler Brand, towards the bucket, and uh, Cutler Brand got one hand on it. Possession arrow favors the J-Dubs, so they'll maintain possession. Here's Marquise Murray in the lane, up and under move, no, but he's fouled. And split two defenders on his way to the bucket and got contacted. I think it's on Brandt. Cutler Brandt, the foul, his first, team second. Team fouls are 2-2 right now. Hurley Young to the line for two to try to give Sexton the lead. Front rim, bounces in the air, goes through. 9-8 Sexton, 2.53 to go first quarter. Aiden Laverty, a senior guard, now in for Charlotte. Grayson Seavolt, number one, going to come into the game as well. Burkampas out. So is Garza. And Garza's out too, yep. Young to try to go two for two from the line here on this trip. Yep. 10-8 Sexton. Full court pressure again by the J-Dubs. Cutler Brandt breaks it. As he goes up for the shot, it's knocked away by Keyshawn Somerville out of bounds. Good hustle defensively to get back. Jabrilion Chandler, number 24 in the game now for Sexton. Out goes Joe Pizzo. And then Evan Kalaski comes back in for Charlotte as uh, Brandt gets a breast. Out to Laverty. Left side, Kalaski. Into the corner. Here's a three for Buzzard. That's no good. Rebound tipped around. Scrummed four. It comes away to Bowser. Bowser. Tyler Bowser, number 24. And they'll reset. Bowser. To Koloski on the left side against this zone. 10 to 8. Sexton. Bowser, top of the key. Left side, Koloski. Now he's just dribbling it around. Now it's kind of, yeah, you're right. It's a matchup zone. They're manning the ball, zoning pretty much everywhere else on the floor. In the middle of the lane, the buzzer knocked away. Taken away. Here comes Marquise Murray. Pass up ahead to number 11. That's Devin Hodges-Smith, and he lays it up and in on the fast break. It's 12-8 Sexton. Scored quickly out of that turnover and nearly got another one. Nearly got another turnover. Here's Laverty with it for Charlotte. They'll kick it back out to Bowser. Tyler Bowser throws it away again. Hurley Young with the steal. Here's Devin Hodges-Smith. 90 seconds to go in the quarter. Marquise Murray. We wanted to take it from about 27 feet and decided not to. Good choice. Middle of the lane. Here is Chandler. Puts an eight-footer up. Puts it in. Jabrilion Chandler, his first basket. It's 14-8 to eight Sexton. Yeah, they're finding a, a good spot in that zone by the man at the high post. Ben Buzzard trying to break the pressure. They're having trouble with it. Turnover again. Somerville, layup. No. Rebound jam. Hurley Young jams it home off the rebound. It's 16 to 8. Timeout, Charlotte. 16 to 8. Sexton with 54.4 seconds left. 
It's a 30 second timeout. It's a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves and come back. 16 to eight Sexton over Charlotte. 54.4 seconds left in the first quarter. Back after this on the game 730 MWVFN and the Lansing Sports WVFN Lansing Sports Leader. Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love back here at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium. Good time out there by Charlotte. They're having all kinds of trouble with this Sexton full court pressure. Yeah, they'll be able to break it and turn the ball over quite a bit. When Cutler Brandt went to the bench, the offense uh, quieted down. He's back in the game now, trying to get it across the timeline, and he does. Nearly carried it. He's going to take it all the way himself. That shot is no good. Rebound comes away to Jabrilion Chandler. Here comes Sexton. Keyshawn Somerville, pump fake, has to kick it out. Now here is Somerville, a three. That's short, no good. Ball tipped around. It's going to come away to Marquise Murray. Up and under shot is good. Marquise Murray has eight, and it's 18-8 to eight Sexton. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Up ahead to Brandt. Brandt double teamed and a foul. It's going to be on Marquise Murray. That'll be his second, the team third. The hesitation dribble by Brandt got Murray into him and uh, bodied him a little bit. That's what they call the foul, but... His second. Is a 10 nothing run by Sexton? Yes. Number 15, Kivon Brown comes into the game now as Murray goes out with the two fouls. Evan Koloski inbounds and gets the ball back. Koloski, top of the key. Right side. Brandt, back to Koloski. Four seconds, three seconds. But inside the buzzard, we got a foul. It's going to be on Chandler, it looks like. Yep. His first, the team fourth. Still no free throws. And there's literally one-tenth of a second <laughs> left. So they really can't do anything. Oh, we got a stoppage here. One of the Sexton players has to retie his shoe. So one-tenth of a second. So it's literally a throw-in and a tip. Up. And it, it almost worked. Ben Buzzard tipped it up towards the basket, but it didn't go in. And we've reached the end of one quarter of play. Sexton leading Charlotte 18 to 8 after one quarter of play. We'll take a timeout and come back for the second here on the game 730 MWVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. Lansing Sports Leader, WVFN. Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love here at Sexton High School, Clayton Co-op Gymnasium. And right now, Sexton's got the lead. They're on a 10-0 run here, leading 18-8 to at the end of the first quarter of play. Whole story, Sexton's full court pressure on defense. Yeah, the defensive pressure forces turnovers, has gotten them some fast break opportunities, and then they've been able to score against the 2-3 uh, the zone from the Orioles. Charlotte gets the ball on alternate possession, so they'll set up in the half court. Here's Malachi Garza on the left. Evan Koloski, top of the key, looking inside to Buzzard. Nice pass inside. The shot is no good. The rebound comes away to Devin Hodges-Smith. Here's Somerville. Now Devin Hodges-Smith. Over to Kevon Brown, number 15, who's in the game because Marquise Murray has two fouls. Hodges Smith on the left. Zone defense here for Charlotte. Here's Somerville with it. Goes right side to Brown. Brown back to Somerville. First minute, second quarter. Hodges Smith in the lane. Tries to get it underneath to Hurley Young. Fumbled it away. The pass is a little bit too high for him. It comes away to Charlotte. Kick it cross court. Cutler Brandt, 22 footer. That's no good. Rebound scrummed for, it comes away to Kevon Brown, number 15. Here come Sexton. Brown lost the ball, tipped out of bounds. Sexton's gonna keep it. Catch up speed by Garza, knocked the ball out of bounds <laughs> and, and slowed down that fast break. 6.49 to go first half, Sexton up 18 to eight. Yeah, it is a 10 nothing run, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, eight to eight. Hodges Smith gets the inbounds pass to Keyshawn Somerville. Left side, Kevon Brown. Brown to Somerville. The outstanding sophomore for Coach DeLeon Deering. 
Gets a screen, comes around the left side, offensive foul. Moving screen by Chandler at the top of the key. His, that's his second, the team's first of the quarter. 6.30 to go, first half. So the reserve big man now with two fouls. And there's two J-dubs that have got those pair of fouls. Marquise Murray and Jabrillion Chandler. Right side here is Evan Koloski. Koloski, high post buzzer. Lost the ball again. Got it tipped away from behind. Here comes Devin Hodges-Smith. He's trying to take it all the way. Nice pass to Keyshawn Somerville. And another nice extra pass to Hurley Young. And Young lays it up and in. Hurley Young's got six. It's a 12-0 run, 20-8. Finally breaking the pressure is Carson Bercompas, and he puts it up and in. Charlotte's first basket of the quarter. It's 20-10 Sexton. They haven't scored in a long time, and that finally stops the drought at 12-0. Now a knock away by Cutler Brandt. Out of the zone defense. He's going to take it all the way. Whistle and a foul. He's going to get some free throws here, and I think that foul's going to be on Hodges Smith. Yeah, he was the one that it reached is. in on it. His first, the team's second. Cutler Brandt has eight points. Two three-pointers and a couple of free throws. This to break a 12-0 run. No, they scored before, so it, Did they, oh, see, remember, I, they just scored. See, I'm so. already messed No, up. you're fine, but Brandt makes the first one. Yeah, that was their first field goal in a long time. Yep. Buzzard goes out. 23, A.J. Spencer Spratlin is in the game now for Charlotte for the first time. And in for Sexton, Joe Pizzo returns, and so does Marquise Murray with the two fouls. Second free throw is up. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Hurley Young. Some really good minutes for Young here. Somerville goes cross court to Pizzo. Or no, that's Kevon Brown, sorry. Brown on the left. 5.25 to go, first half. Marquise Murray to Kevon Brown. Now here's Somerville. They're trying to figure out what to do in the zone here, against the zone, rather. Somerville driving against the zone. Backs out, now kicks it left side. Here's Murray, three, rattles, no. Rebound, comes away to Koloski for Charlotte. He's in the backcourt, nearly turned it over, and Malachi Garza comes away with it for the Orioles. Here comes Garza, 4.50 to go first half. In the corner to Spencer Spratlin. A.J. Spencer Spratlin, he's got the ball again. Now Cutler Brandt, left corner, three. That's no good. Rebound tipped around, comes away to Brandt. His first rebound of the game. Now here's a three put up, yes! That's Evan Koloski and that's a huge basket there for Charlotte. It's, now we got a timeout here by Sexton. 30 second timeout. Charlotte making a little bit of a run. So uh, 20 coach. to 14 after that three pointer by Koloski, his first basket of the game. It's a 30 second timeout by Sexton, so we'll stay right here with 4.29 to go in the half. Yeah, a little bit of a run by the Orioles, and so uh, Coach Deering decides I'm going to call a timeout, get, settle things guys down a little bit. Uh, the offensive movement hasn't been quite as specific as it's been in the past, so they want to talk things over. The game 7.30 AM's presentation of high school basketball brought to you in part by the Lansing Sports Commission. No matter the sport, the Lansing Sports Commission can make your next event your best event. Plan on something greater. Find out more at lansingsports.org. And by Jeff and Chris Metz and Doubting Industries. Always looking to develop your talent? Michigan's a manufacturing state. If you're looking for a career with huge potential, check them out at uh, doubtingindustries.com. Here's Marquise Murray. Gets it over to Devin Hodges-Smith, penetrating the zone, throws it away. Like uh, Charlotte changed their defense up a little bit. They started trapping a little bit on that last possession, and that forced the turnover. 20 to 14, Sexton leading, 4.18 to go first half. Malachi Garza, double teamed in the backcourt. Gets it over to Evan Koloski, up ahead to Cutler Brandt. Brandt taking it all the way. Layup is up, that's no good. Offensive rebound by Burkampus, they'll reset. Koloski, floater, no. Rebound put back by Koloski, yes. He's got five points to go with three rebounds. It's 20 to 16. Here's Keyshawn Somerville. Yet to score tonight, Doc. He's their leading scorer, hasn't scored tonight. 
You know, 0 for 3 from beyond the arc, and that's it. For they get him. it to Kevon Brown. Now kick it back out to Hodges Smith. Hodges Smith penetrates. Banker, good. Got in the paint, and nobody followed him. Hodges Smith with four. It's 22 16. Here's Cutler Brandt taking it all the way against a double team. That shot's no good. Rebound, Burkampus. Back outside for a three. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Pizzo for Sexton. Yeah, Garza had a good look, but it wouldn't go in. That was Malachi Garza on the shot. You're right. 317 to go first half. 22 16, Sexton. Pizzo. That's Marquise Murray, sorry. Number three. In the middle of the lane to Devin Hodges Smith. Nice pass underneath. Reverse layup is good by Hurley Young. What a half for Hurley Young. Eight points to go with a couple of rebounds. And now another near turnover here. They're scrumming for it. And we got a whistle. Travel on Sexton. Trying to call timeout. You know, Hurley Young got down on the court. Had possession of the ball, but he rolled over with it. And that's a travel. Trying to call timeout as well. Couldn't quite get it. 32 to Quarius Jones in the game. And let's see who's in the game now for Charlotte. Number 24, Tyler Bowser. And uh, Ben Buzzard's back in number 14. Yeah, Buzzard's back in the game. 24-16 Sexton, 2.55 to go. First half. Tyler Bowser. Over to Malachi Garza. Here's Cutler Brandt. Single covered by Keyshawn Somerville. <coughs> Excuse me. Malachi Garza, deep on the right. Top of the key, that's Tyler Bowser. Now Garza, back to Bowser. Down to 2.30 to go in the half. Kick it in the left corner. Here's Brandt, driving baseline, lost his man, but another man comes by to pick him up. Middle of the lane, Buzzer driving. Tried to get it to, to Burkampus, and it was knocked away by Marquise Murray out of bounds. Prevented an easy basket. You know, one too many passes. I thought that Buzzard should have taken that one in, and instead of trying to dump it off to Burkampus because that allowed a defender to come in and then knock the ball out of bounds. 24-16, Sexton leading, 2.17 to go in the first half. And Charlotte will reset. Malachi Garza deep on the left to Cutler Brandt. He's about 30 feet away. He won't shoot from out there, I don't think. Garza against Devin Hodges-Smith. In the corner, right in front of us, Tyler Bowser trying to drive. Nearly has it taken away. They're lucky to keep their keep possession. Bowser Hodges nearly turned it over twice. Hodges-Smith is all over him. Buzzard in the lane, lost it, got it back, and he's bumped and fouled. I think it's going to be on Jones. Yeah, Dequarius Jones. His first, the team third. Team fouls, three for Sexton, none for Charlotte. Active hands by the J-Dubs, uh, knocking the ball away several times. Tyler Bowser gets it in. Kick ball, and it'll stay with Charlotte. Quick hands and quick feet that time. Devon Hodges-Smith with that one. Number 10, Evan Koloski in. Out goes Tyler Bowser. And no matter what happens in this game, the best place other than Don Johnson Fieldhouse to watch a game in the mid-Michigan area, the Oriole Dome in Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Malachi Garza, 18-footer. No. Rebound tipped around. Man, a lot of tip-outs here. And the rebound comes away to Devin Hodges-Smith. Now a three-pointer by Marquise Murray. That's way off. Rebound comes away to Garza. Here comes Charlotte. Koloski with it in the lane to Buzzer. Double-teamed. Shot is no good. Rebound comes away to Hodges Smith. Smith in the backcourt crosses his man over. And now he lost the ball. Tipped away. Garza up ahead to Brandt. Brandt, layup. No, he missed it. Buzzard can't get the rebound. Koloski gets the rebound. And now Brandt tried to throw it off a Sexton man, and that was unsuccessful. Here comes Keyshawn Somerville, and he's tripped and fouled. That's going to be on Garza, I believe. His first, the team first of this quarter. Golden opportunity for Charlotte to mm -hmm. score, Doc, and just not getting it done. They've had some two-on-one opportunities, and uh, the Sexton J-Dub defense has just been better. 24-16 Sexton, one minute to go in the first half. Marquise Murray over to Somerville. Keyshawn Somerville, their leading scorer, has not scored yet tonight. It's been everybody else. They've stepped up and played well. I think they might hold it for the last shot. Against this zone. And I got to tell you what, if Charlotte's behind in the second half and they're still in this zone, uh, Sexton may go to a delay game just to get them out of the zone. I say you're gonna you're gonna have to change things up. You might have to go to a man-to-man -man or something. 
something a little more active where you're not mm -hmm. just standing. Under 30 seconds to go. Now they've switched it up, and now they've gone back out to the zone. They had switched it to man-to-man, -man and then they dropped back. Right side, Somerville. Inside number five, Joe Pizzo. That shot is no good. Rebound. Put back by Pizzo. That's no good. Re rebound comes away to Buzzer. Here comes Charlotte with a chance. Under 10 seconds to go. Koloski with it, left of the key. He's going to drive all the way. That's no good. Tip, we got a foul. 1.8 seconds to go in the half. I think it's Burkampus. Yep, a shove in the back on the rebound attempt. Pizzo tipped that rebound out. I'll give him credit for a rebound. He's got four. 1.8 seconds to go in the half. Inbound to Somerville. Launches from half court. Nope, too much. But Sexton has the lead, 24-16 after 16 minutes of play. We'll have halftime stats and analysis after this, after this edition of This Week in High School Sports with John Ross. The winter sports season continues as we're now into 2024. I'm John Ross, and this is This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid. Happy New Year, and welcome back to the winter sports season. Believe it or not, our first basketball district games are just seven and a half weeks away. Let's take you through the rest of the hoop schedule so you know what to expect. And remember, this year the boys' finals will be played first, followed by the girls' finals. Boys' districts will tip off February 26th with district finals on March 1st. District assignments are already set, and the draw will be posted on February 18th. The regional round will be played March 5th and 7th, with the quarterfinals on Tuesday, March 12th. The Breslin Center in East Lansing will once again play host to the semifinal and final rounds. The semis are March 14th and 15th, with the finals on Saturday, March 16th. All quarterfinal and semifinal action will be streamed live on the NFHS network, and all four finals will air live on Valley Sports Detroit. Munising, Flint Beecher, Ferndale, and Cass Tech will all be looking to repeat as champions. On the girls' side, everything is one week later. So that means district play starts March 4th, regional play starts March 11th. The quarters are March 19th, and the semifinals and finals are March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, also at the Reslin Center. Glen Lake, Hemlock, Lansing Catholic, and Rockford are your defending champs. In addition to the NFHS Network and Valley Sports Detroit, all semifinal and final games for both the boys and girls will also be available on the MHSAA Championship Radio Network. For scores, schedules, pairings, and more, be sure to check out MHSAA.com. It's time for Game Balls, when we highlight a trio of standout performances from over the break. First, Ludington's David Schillinger. He poured in 34 points and a 12-point win over Montague. In doing so, Schillinger becomes Ludington's all-time leading scorer, surpassing Mike Larson. Ortonville Brandon's Riley Abner also broke a school scoring mark. She went into the break with 1,176 points, more than any other Hooper, boy or girl, has ever scored for the Blackhawks. And despite dropping a game to Buckley, Benzie Central's Jackson Childers won over 1,000 career points. For high school seniors, the matchup of the year isn't on the field. It's actually online. That's right. When you fill out the FAFSA, you know, the free application for federal student aid, you could also be eligible for thousands of dollars in additional money from the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Yep, nearly 80% of students who fill out the FAFSA may be eligible. Now that's a matchup we can all root for. Get started today at michigan.gov slash achievement. The Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. Our weekly Be the Referee feature takes a look at the fine art of officiating with the MHSAA's Director of Officiating Services, Sam Davis. A rule change in high school basketball means there will no longer be one and one free throws. And team fouls now reset after each quarter, not at the half. Here's how it works. A team will reach the bonus in each quarter once their opponent has committed five fouls. That means teams will shoot two free throws for all common fouls after the fourth team foul in a quarter. Previously, teams weren't in the bonus until the seventh team foul, and then shot one and one free throws until the tenth team foul of a half or double bonus was reached. A foul on a three-point attempt will result in three free throws for the shooter and still counts as a team foul. Thanks, Sam. Now more than ever, we need officials. If you're interested, 
Go to the MHSAA website now to register. Seven other winter sports will see their postseason start in February. The ski finals for both boys and girls are February 26th. Team wrestling finals will be February 23rd and 24th in Kalamazoo, with the individual finals March 1st and 2nd at Ford Field. Bowling regionals are February 23rd and 24th, with the finals on March 1st and 2nd. And that's the same weekend as the competitive cheer finals, which will be back at McGurk Arena in Mount Pleasant. The gymnastic finals are March 8th and 9th. The ice hockey finals and Lower Peninsula Boys Swimming and Diving finals are also that weekend. The UP Swim and Dive finals are on February 17th. Information for all of these tournaments and how to get tickets and more can be found at MHSAA.com. You've been listening to This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid, a production of the MHSAA Network. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Ross, and we'll be back next week. Brock Palm with Sharon Doc Love here at Sexton High School. Sexton leading Charlotte 24 to 16. All right, let's quickly get to the stats here uh, for uh, Charlotte, trailing 24 to 16. Leading score for them, Cutler Brandt. He's got nine points and one rebound. Evan Koloski has five points, four rebounds. Carson Bercompas, two points and three rebounds. Ben Buzzard has five rebounds, has not scored. Malachi Garza, three rebounds, hasn't scored yet. And Tyler Bowser has one rebound as well. Three for four from the line. Carson Bercompas, the only player for Charlotte with two fouls. For Sexton, they're two for two from the line. Their leading scorer, surprisingly, is Marquise Murray with 10 points. I shorted him two points in the first half. 10 points, two rebounds. Uh, hampered by foul trouble. He had a couple of fouls in the first half, but Hurley Young came in off the bench, Doc, and did a very good job. Six points and three rebounds, and he was all over the floor. Yeah, your, uh, Young had a great first half coming in, uh, and uh, he didn't come in until about midway through the first quarter, but has been a huge impact for him. Devin Hodges-Smith, four points, three rebounds. Uh, Joe Pizzo, two points, four rebounds. Jabrilion Chandler, two points, one rebound. Dequarius Jones has a rebound. Kevon Brown has a rebound. Uh, team rebounds, Charlotte with 17, Sexton with 15. Charlotte, three for four from the line. Sexton, two for two from the line. Foul trouble, Marquise Murray for Sexton. Jabrilion Chandler for Sexton both have two fouls. Carson Burkampas has two fouls for Charlotte. Keys to the second half and the second half tip coming up. Well, not the tip, but the start of the second half coming up after this on the game, 7.30 a.m., WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. Um, the game, 7.30 a.m. Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love back at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium on the campus of Sexton High School. Sexton leads Charlotte 24 to 16. Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by the Lansing Sports Commission and by Jeff and Chris Metz at Doubting Industries. We'll tell you more about them later. But, Doc, keys to the second half. Well, for Charlotte, uh, they're going to attack this uh, matchup zone for Sexton. Uh, Orioles have had some issues. One, breaking the press. And then two, when they get into the half-court offense, uh, they've had to kind of settle for a lot of deep threes or, you know, tough shots, to say the least. But uh, keep attacking the zone. A little more dribble penetration. Kick out, maybe work for them. Defensively, yeah, them being down. Oh, hold on. Oh, so uh, they just made an announcement, Brock. You want to tell them there was a technical foul? On what, Devin Hodges-Smith, they yes. said? Cutler Brandt is shooting the free throws. He missed the first one. Wow. And he made Makes the second. the second one. Okay. okay. So mu something must have happened going into the half. Wow. Well, that's his. Uh, that's Hodges-Smith's second. That's the first of the quarter. Brandt missed the first free throw, hit the second. Yep. Back to my keys, uh, Charlotte defensively, if you know, they're down right now seven, if it comes to that way in the fourth quarter, they're going to have to come out of that zone. They have to go to a, a man and something that's going to have to force the issue a little bit more because they're down, obviously, and Sexton can just slow things down. And because of the technical foul, Charlotte's going to keep the ball. Yeah. It doesn't go to Sexton in alternate possession. Cutler Brand, deep three. Yes. Fading away. It's now 24 to 20. He's got 13 points leading the way for him. And just like that, it's a four-point game. Now the keys for J-Dubs. Just keep attacking. They've done a great job against this zone. Uh, if Somerville keeps going, then they, they'll have, you know, keep the lead, build their lead right back up. Keyshawn Somerville with it, who did not, their leading score did not score in that first half. Over to Kevon Brown. In the middle of the lane to 32, that's Dequarius Jones. Gets it to Joe Pizzo, but had it knocked away out of bounds. Bacampus with the quick hands. Not sure what happened there. I mean, you caught it before I did, Doc. 
Not sure what happened there. And Hodges Smith just came back in. Kevon Brown goes back to the bench. So I guess Hodges Smith didn't let him start the second half. He's driving all the way in. Nice pass inside to Pizzo. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Buzzard. We got a whistle and we got a foul. And it's going to be on Pizzo for Sexton. His first, the team's second. And Buzzard got the rebound and then they sing that he tripped him while Pizzo was on the court. Sexton fans weren't happy. They thought there should have been a foul on the shot attempt by Pizzo. Buzzard throws it away. Oh, nope. no, he's able to save it. Alki Garza nope. was able to save it. No, he wasn't. Press nope. again, causing problems for Charlotte. Yeah, uh, Buzzard trying to outlet the pass to Garza towards his coach there on the sideline, and it was too far out of bounds for Malachi to save it. They inbound to Devin Hodges-Smith. 24-20. Sexton leading, 7.05 to go, first uh, third quarter. Marquise Murray over to Hodges Smith, now to back to Murray. Somerville on the left wing. He's trying to drive. Now he fades for three. Yes! His first basket of the game, and now a steal. Somerville fakes a three, going to drive baseline. Trying to get it inside, now a scrum for it. It comes away to Garza. Now he got a, a held ball. It's going to stay with Sexton. 27-20 Sexton. That's a huge three for the J-Dubs. How about Marquise Murray skying out of the, in the air and pulling down that steal? Marquise Murray driving in the lane. Scoop layup. No. Tipped around. Comes away to Koloski for Charlotte. Evan Koloski up ahead to Brandt. Throws it back out. He travels. Travel. Got caught in the air. Yep. 6.31 to go. Third quarter. 27-20 Sexton. Number 15, Kavon Brown back in the game. Out goes Marquise Murray. Twenty-seven twenty. Murray's Sexton gonna, lady, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Murray's going to take a seat on the ground over there. I don't know if he was uh, having a leg cramp issue or something. Could be. Somerville with it deep on the right, gets it in the middle of the lane to Jones. Whistle. We got a Charlotte foul. It's only the fourth foul on Charlotte in this game. Carson Burkampus. It's his third. I've got three fouls. Yep. That's only the fifth team, uh, fifth team foul, or fifth foul of the game. He's got three. He goes out, and Tyler Bowser replaces him. Here's a shot put up by Kevon Brown. That shot's no good. Another scrum for it. Ben Buzzard comes away with it. Here comes Charlotte down by seven. Koloski to Garza, back to Koloski. Garza driving, has to kick it back out to Koloski on the right. Inside, Garza, 22-footer, no. Rebound, comes away to Somerville. Here come the J-Dubs. 5.40 to go, third quarter. High post to Quarius Jones, nice pass to Joe Pizzo. High, low action there, and it's 29-20 after the Pizzo layup. And Jones, good vision out there for a big man. Across the timeline, Koloski into the corner to Tyler Bowser. Now Evan Koloski. Charlotte down by nine. 5.18 to go, third quarter. Garza deep on the right. Across the way to Koloski. High post buzzer. Koloski, three, no. Rebound, comes out to Garza. They'll reset. Garza driving baseline, shot up, nobody's fouled. That'll be the third team foul. That's Joe Pizzo, that's his third. Hurley Young's gonna come back into the game here after the first free throw by Malachi Garza. Marquise Murray as well. First one up, good. That's his first point of the game to go with four rebounds. 29-21, Sexton over Charlotte. You know, Pizzo takes a seat with his three fouls. Second one. Nope. Ball tipped around, and it comes away to Garza. They'll reset. Deep three, Cutler Brandt. No. Rebound. Scrummed for. Buzzard. Buzzard comes away with it. And now we got a whistle and another Sexton foul. Be the fourth team foul with 4.51 to go, and I think that's Hodges-Smith. 
That's his third. So he's got three fouls. Joe Pizzo has three fouls. And more importantly, it's the fourth team foul, so it's free throws the rest of the quarter. And now the official's talking to number two, Hurley Young. And Sexton's going to call a full timeout. Sexton leading Charlotte 29-21 with 4.51 to go in the, in the third. A 30-second break, and we're back on the game, 7.30 a.m. WVFN East Lansing, a town square media station. The game, 7.30 a.m. WVFN. Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love here at Sexton High School. Sexton leading Charlotte 29-21. Coach DeLeon Deering calling a full timeout. Probably calm his team down a yes. little bit. Not happy with the fouls right now. They've got 14 fouls compared to Charlotte's one. And the referee <laughs> talking to Hurley, too. So another good way for his, you know, bringing the guys over, talk things out. Inside the buzzer, who gets the inbounds pass. Now Koloski with it. Lost the ball momentarily. Taken away. Keyshawn Somerville. It's two on one the other way. Up ahead to Marquise Murray. The layup is good. Murray has 12. It's 31 21 Sexton. Pretty good sophomore backcourt right there, Somerville and Murray. Koloski, top of the key, middle of the key, Buzzard. Buzzard gets it inside, Koloski, layup, good. Moving out the ball. Koloski has seven to go with five rebounds. It's 31-23. 4-19 and counting, third quarter. High post, that's Aquarius Jones, 12-foot floater. No, tough luck miss there. Ben Buzzard the rebound. Buzzard hasn't scored tonight, but he's got nine rebounds. Here's Koloski. Deep on the right. Left side, Brandt. Being guarded by Kevon Brown. Tyler Bowser. Now Garza, a deep three. Yes! Wow. All four of his points here in this half. It's 31-26 Sexton. 3.38 to go third quarter. Kevon Brown. Deep on the right to Murray. Here's to Aquarius Jones in the lane. 14 footer. Yes. They're just leaving him alone. That's his first basket of the game. It's 33 26. Here's Cutler Brandt breaking the pressure. Three. No. Rebound. Comes away to Hurley Young. Young up ahead to Aquarius Jones. Deep in the left corner, right in front of the bench, Keyshawn Somerville. Here's Kevon Brown. Now they reset. Three minutes to go, third quarter, 33-26 Sexton. Kevon Brown, Somerville, mid post, middle of the lane, Jones. Now they go to the right, Murray. Somerville, 22-footer, yes! If he gets going, look out. Yeah. 36-26 Sexton. Cutler Brandt driving, foul. It's gonna be on Kevon Brown, just his first. Team fifth, and that means free throws. Coming in for Charlotte, number one, Grayson Seavolt. And 23, A.J. Spencer Spratlin. Did I short Dequarius Jones a basket? I have him for two points. Did I miss something there? Who is it? Dequarius Jones for Sexton, 32. Uh, I have two points. Okay. I thought maybe I shorted him one. Nope. Free throw by Cutler Brand is no good. He's missed three free throws here tonight. Four for seven from the line. Jabrilion Chandler in the game now for Sexton. Orioles down 10, 36-26. 2.39 to go in the third. Second one. No, front rim no good. Rebound comes away to A.J. Spencer Spratlin. He throws it away. And he throws it away. Four for eight from the line for Cutler Brandt. Mm. 2.35 to go, third quarter. Sexton up by 10. This game is for the lead in the CAAC White. Here's a 15 footer. Yes! To Aquarius. Nope. Oh, that's 24. Sorry, Jabrilion Chandler, his second basket of the game. It's 38 26, and now Charlotte throws it away. Charlotte down 12. They're in trouble right now. This is ties to the biggest lead of the game for Sexton as well. And now a chance to expand on that. Orioles with lots of turnovers. They have to be at least double-digit turnovers right now. 2-15 and counting third quarter. Marquise Murray against the zone. 
Hey, they got a 12-point lead. There's no shot clock. They can afford to do this. Yeah, they don't have to. Somerville now double teamed out towards midcourt, and he lost it. Taken away, Cutler Brandt takes it all the way. No, he missed the layup. Rebound comes away to Marquise Murray. Here comes Sexton up ahead. Kevon Brown. Stepped out of bounds. And either stepped out of bounds or dribbled out of bounds. Turnover anyway. Carson Burkampus with three fouls coming in the game now for Charlotte. 148 to go, third quarter. Charlotte down a dozen. Evan Koloski back in the game. Cutler Brandt goes out. They inbound to Grayson Sievolt. And now here's Koloski again against the, the uh, double team, the pressure. Malachi Garza to Koloski. Now Garza again. Thought about a three, didn't take it. He's going to take it all the way. The shot is up. That shot is no good. Whistle and a Charlotte foul. Murray with the rebound. Yep. Grappus just came back in. Now he has his fourth. That's his fourth. Team second. He's going to have to come out. First player in the game with four fouls. Aiden Laverty, the senior, comes back in for him. Second team foul of this quarter. Down to a minute 30 left in the third quarter. High post, Jabrilion Chandler. Left side, nice pass inside. Number two, Hurley Young. The high-low passing for Sexton has been outstanding tonight, Doc. They lead by 14. Yeah, Hurley Young with the slam after the great pass by Chandler. Malachi Garza trying to get it across the timeline. Double dribble. Oh, a foul. Yep. It would have been a double dribble if he hadn't gotten fouled by Kevon Brown. Kevon Brown, the foul, his second. Sexton pumped up right now. They should be. Nice crowd tonight here, by the way. Shouldn't it be free throws? Yep, okay, all right. Yep. They were going to go to the sideline or the, the sideline and give him the, the uh, inbound, but no. Again, new rule. Yep. Fouls per quarter now. No one and ones anymore. Five fouls per quarter. On the fifth foul, fifth team foul, you're shooting free throws. Yep. Just like women's college basketball and very similar to the NBA. Garza, the first free throw. Man. Sure a lot. That's one, two, three, four, five, six free throws they've missed tonight. Garza's one for three from the stripe. 106 to go, third quarter. Sexton up 14. Second one. That's good. 40 to 27. 105 to go. Somerville, middle of the lane. Chandler, free throw line jumper. Banker, that's no good. Rebound comes away to Koloski. Here comes Charlotte. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Garza up ahead to Koloski. Middle of the lane, that's number four, Aiden Laverty. Kicks it outside to Spencer Spratlin. Spratlin inside to Laverty, puts the shot up, no. Rebound comes away to Kevon Brown. Stolen oh, away. Oh, it's stolen away. Koloski with a shot, that's no good. Rebound to Laverty. And they'll reset with under 30 seconds to go. Garza with it. Looking for a screen, can't get it. Spencer Spratlin, high post, Laverty. Laverty to Koloski, driving all the way, shot. Good, count it and a foul. To Brillion Chandler, his third. They're in the bonus. They said Laverty with the basket, but it was Koloski. Yeah. Missed the free throw is no good. Rebound. Hurley Young. Hurley Young with a rebound. Ten seconds to go. It's 40 to 29. Middle of the lane. Chandler kicks it out. Three for Murray. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Sievolt. Half court heave by Garza is no good. We've reached the end of three quarters of play. It's Sexton 40. Charlotte 29. Come on back for the fourth. On the game, 730 AM WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. WVFN. Brock Palmbush, Eric Docklove back here at Clayton Kowak Gymnasium on the campus of Sexton High School. A game for the CAAC white lead. Both teams 2-0 in league play. Sexton leading 40-29. The story of this game so far through three quarters has been the Sexton J-Dub defense. Uh, they've caused a lot of turnovers, whether it come from the full court press or just in the half court option as well. And that's led to fast break points for them and 
They've been able to just make some more shots. Charlotte missing a bunch of free throws. They missed three, five, six free throws in that third quarter alone. 40 to 29, stolen. Here's a steal. Keyshawn Somerville up ahead to Marquise Murray. Layup, left side, good. He's got 14, it's 42-29 Sexton. Evan Koloski gets it across the timeline to A.J. Spencer Spratlin. Spratlin driving, shot up, wild shot, that's no good. Murray, the rebound, and I think he's fouled. He is. Ben Buzzard, the foul, his first. Buzzard, has, one of their leading scorers, has not scored tonight, although he's got nine rebounds. Yeah, he's been able to do some other things, but hasn't gotten the looks in the paint. 0 for 4. Let's see if Charlotte comes out of the zone, and they are. Yep. Got to go man-to-man. Yeah, -man. They got to go man to Yeah, they got to go man-to-man -man now. So, uh, Somerville fades from 18. That's no good. Buzzard the rebound. That's 10 rebounds for him. Rebounds are great, but now you got to score some points. Mm -hmm. They're down 13 with seven minutes to go. Koloski, left side, in the lane, layup, yes. Nobody picked him up defensively, really. Nobody committed to him, at least. He's got 11. It's 42-31 Sexton, 6.54 to go. Somerville, driving, 10-foot floater. That's no good. Rebound, and it's going to be a push on Aquarius Jones. Yep. His second, the team's first, we're going the other way. 6.44 to go in regulation. Koloski inbounds to Buzzard. Over on the right to Garza. Garza across the way to Koloski. He gets it across the timeline. A.J. Spencer Spratlin a three. He got it! His first basket of the game and pulls him within eight, 42-34. And now Sexton's going to call a timeout. And it's a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves and come back. Charlotte trying to make a run, trailing 42-34 with 6.27 left in regulation. Back after this on the game, 7.30 AM WVFN. Lansing Sports League, the game, 7.30 AM. Rock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love. Clayton Kowak Gymnasium on the campus of Sexton High School, the second floor of a Sexton High School. Very springy floor here, a lot of give to it. And Sexton has been the better team for most of this game, leading 42-34, but Charlotte trying to make a little run here. Yeah, a little mini run, 5-2 to start this uh, potential final period of the game. 42-34, 6.23 to go. Charlotte did switch to man-to-man -man like we thought they might. Here's Keyshawn Somerville driving, double team, wild shot, and he's fouled. I think that's going to be on A.J. Spencer Spratlin, I think. Uh, talking it over right now, I believe it is. Yep. The team's second, and yes, they're going to give him free throws. I think, that's the, right, yep, I think that's the right call. It didn't happen before the shot attempt. It happened on the shot attempt. Yes. Somerville was in the air felt, when he got hit. Felt the contact and then threw it up, but it was close enough to the contact that he got the uh, free throws. See if he can cash these in. First one rattles but falls. Team fouls right now. Two for Charlotte, one for Sexton here in this quarter. Somerville, all seven of his points here have been in the second half. 43-34. Here's the second. Good. 44-34. Back to the pressure for Sexton. Evan Koloski. Cross the way to Cutler Brandt. Brandt feels contact. Now he's going to drive. Gets double teamed. Kicks it back out to, uh, to Garza. <coughs> Evan Koloski driving all the way. Shot up. No. Buzzard the rebound. Put back. No. Rebound. Koloski. Koloski with the rebound. They'll reset. And now Charlotte's going to call timeout. Garza fell on the ground, and to save the possession, he calls timeout. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll stay right here. Timeouts remaining in this game. Charlotte has three. Two full and a 30. Sexton has two left. One full and a 30. See if that's a factor later on in this game. 44-34 Sexton over Charlotte. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Lansing Sports Commission. No matter the sport, the Lansing Sports Commission can make your next event your best event. 
plan on something greater. Find out more at lansingsports.org. And by Jeff and Chris Metz at Doubting Industries. Always interested in individuals that have the drive and desire to be successful in work and in life. Check them out at doubtingindustries.com. You may find a successful future here. Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love, here at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium at Sexton High School. This is a game between Charlotte and Sexton for the lead in the CAAC White. We're getting close to the halfway point already. It's hard to believe. Well, they started a little earlier than usual. They did. Here's Malachi Garza, top of the key. High post buzzard. Buzzard driving on his man, kicks it out to Cutler Brandt. Brandt, right side, Garza. Here's Brandt again. Guarding him real tightly and aggressively. Garza, top of the key. A.J. Spencer Spratlin gets into the lane. Fades from 10. No. Rebound comes away to Joe Pizzo. Sexton up 10. They'll take their time. 5.13 to go. Somerville out towards midcourt. Gets a high screen. You can be deliberate here, but don't want to go to a full-on stall here. Here they go to a, a three-man weave here. Nearly a foul, and now we got a, a bump here on Malachi Garza. That'll be his second, the team third. I mean, they want to be aggressive defensively, does Charlotte, but not quite too aggressive yet. 4.56 to go. They've got one more foul to give, and then they're in the bonus. Yeah, lots of time left. Throw it into the backcourt. Sexton so far, four for four from the line. So. Yes. Somerville, right side, Murray. Murray lost it momentarily, got it back. Guarded by Garza. Gets a screen, goes around everybody. 12-foot floater, no. Rebound, tipped. Buzzard with the rebound, and we got a whistle. Held ball. It's going to stay with Sexton. Murray put that shot up. It looked like he was going to try and tip it back in. He lost control. Buzzard got the ball. Do we give Murray credit for a no, rebound? No, not really. And now timeout, Charlotte. They're going to take a full timeout. We'll take one ourselves. Sexton leading Charlotte, 44-34 with 437 left in regulation. Back after this on the game, 7.30 a.m. WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. Lansing's only sports station. The game, 7.30. Let's play. <laughs> Brock Palmbush, Eric Doc Love, 4.37 to go in regulation. Sexton leading Charlotte 44 to 34. Winner of this game he has a 3-0 league record and takes first place in the CAAC White. Sexton with the ball. Both teams with two timeouts left. Possession arrow favoring Charlotte now. Got a wet spot right in front of the Charlotte bench. It's got to get cleaned up. Trying to get it in. Jabrili on Chandler. They do get it in to Marquise Murray. Murray to Somerville. Looking like they're going to a weave here. Mm -hmm. Not a full-on delay, but taking their time. Somerville with it. Looking inside. They do get it down to Pizzo. Pizzo to Chandler. They kick it back out to Murray and now to uh, Somerville again. Between the legs dribble. Guarded by Evan Koloski. Somerville's double team, threw it away, scrum for it. Somerville's able to save it, and now they get it into the front court again. Nearly a turnover, Chandler. Over to, Mur to uh, that's not Murray, that's, that's Somerville. 3.50 to go. Charlotte's going to have to come out and foul eventually. Yep. You can just see it happening. They're not in a full-on delay, but it's just keep away. Oh, and there's an aggressive foul on Ben Buzzard, his second, the team four. Close to an intentional foul. The inbound into the backcourt does Sexton. They got a 10 point lead with 3.35 to go. And they're not in a hurry. No, but Sexton throws it away. And now Charlotte throws it away. Somerville has it. He's double teamed. They're going to be, have to be trapping all over the place now. Somerville with it. Takes it baseline. Kicks it out. Here's Somerville faking a three. Now a deep two. No. 
Rebound, Chandler, put back, nobody's fouled. That's the 15th foul on Charlotte, so it's free throws the rest of the way. Malachi Garza, the foul, his third. 3.11 to go. Jabrilion Chandler, four points, two rebounds. Five points, two rebounds. He knocks the free throw down. He's been solid tonight. Doesn't have the greatest stats, but he's made some good passes. It hasn't hurt him out there. He'd be playing more, but he had he had uh, foul trouble. He's got three fouls on him, but he's in there now. Second free throw is good. J-Dubs are knocking him down from the charity strike. 46-34. Here's Cutler Brandt. Driving, kicking, Garza. Three-pointer. No. Rebound. Buzzard. Whistle, and he's fouled. That's just Sex Sexton's second team foul. That's Chandler's fourth, team second, no free throws. When you're ahead like this, fouls like that don't hurt you all that much, except no. it is Chandler's fourth. 46-34, 301 left. Koloski inbounds to Buzzard, layup, good. Finally gets on the board to go with 13 rebounds. It's 46-36. Joe Pizzo breaking the pressure, layup, good. Pizzo with six points and five rebounds, 48-36. A.J. Spencer Spratlin up ahead to Evan Koloski. Koloski left side, Brant in the left corner. Trying to drive baseline, lost the ball, out of bounds, over to Sexton, just lost the ball. Yep. Good defense by Marquise Murray. Jabrilion Chandler will go out, 32 to Quarius Jones in. Grayson Seavolt now in the game for Charlotte. Number one, 235 left in regulation. Uh, Tyler Bowser comes back in as well for the Orioles. 235 left. Yeah, they're running out of time. Charlotte now going to full court pressure. See if it works. Keyshawn Somerville, who's been better in the second half, did not score in the first half. They break the pressure. Up ahead to Marquise Murray. Now left side, Somerville. Over to Devin Hodges-Smith. Smith, Hodges Smith rather, tried to get it inside to Joe Pizzo. Shot is up, no good, but he's fouled. Seavolt the foul, his first penalty situation. Joe Pizzo to the line for two. Six points, five rebounds for Pizzo, the team's quarterback during football season. And he drops in that free throw. 49-36 Sexton. 2.15 to go. Second one. That's good. 50 to 36. Got to tell you, I'm surprised by this score, Doc. I thought it'd come down to the last couple possessions. And it still might, but that's looking less likely. Inside Buzzard. Buzzard, out high Garza. Here's 24, Bowser. Brandt. Deep on the right is Brandt. Get it inside to Buzzard, a 12-footer, yes. 50 to 36, 50 to 38 rather. Oh, they break the pressure, oh! And Marquise Murray tried to jam it, can't get it to go, but Keyshawn Somerville gets the rebound. Devon Hodges-Smith with Hodges the rebound. Hodges-Smith rather, my bad. And he drops in a three, he's got seven, it's 53-38. Cutler Brandt three, no, rebound, tipped around. I think that's Dequarius Jones, yep. yes it is. Up ahead to Devin Hodges-Smith, left side. Three, Marquise Murray, shot no good, but he's fouled. 53-38, a minute 14 to go. Foul on Tyler Bowser. Charlotte's committed eight fouls in this quarter. They committed six fouls the first three quarters. Free throw is up, no good for Marquise Murray. First free throw miss of the night. 13, Troy Bell in the game for the first time for Sexton. Aiden Laverty back in for Charlotte. And we're gonna see Alex Reed, number 22, the junior for the first time. Both teams emptying the bench a little bit here with a minute 14 to go. And Sexton building up on their lead, that's why. Second free throw. That's no good, rebound Laverty. Laverty. 
Christian Powers in the game for the first time for Charlotte. Shot up by Laverty is no good. The rebound comes away to Laverty. Laverty kicks it out to Brandt. Cutler Brandt still in the game. They get it to Alex Reed, number 22. That's no good. Rebound comes away to Troy Bell. Here comes Sexton up ahead. Somerville driving, kicking it back out. Devin Hodges-Smith back to Somerville. Whistle. And a foul on Sexton, I believe. And I'm not sure what happened. Referee over there talking to the Sexton coaches. No signal to the scorer's table. We're coming in for Sexton, uh, number 23, Jared Hiley. Uh, it's a turnover anyway. Christian Powers with it. And Sexton's going to win this one. We're in the final 30 seconds. Cutler Brandt, deep three. No. Rebound. Tipped around. Shot up by Brandt. That's no good. The rebound comes away to Devin Hodges-Smith. Powers out the last rebound for Charlotte, and it's stolen away by Cutler Brandt. In the final seconds, little shot is up. No good, but Devin Hodges-Smith commits the foul. His fourth, the team third, but it's going to be free throws here. And a big win for Sexton, Doc. They now have a 4-4 four and four overall record. 3-0 and in the CAAC White, and they're leading right now. We, so we get close to the halfway point. Go ahead. So we talked about that coming into this ballgame in the pregame show about this would be a big win for them as Cutler Brandt knocks down the first to start out 2024. Yep. Even out their record and then take that one game lead in the White. 53-39. The 3-4 and four record was a little misleading, a little to bit. be honest. Yep. Second free throw is up, and that's good. 53 to 40, 10 seconds left. They're just gonna run this out. Devin Hodges-Smith dribbles it out. Four, three, two, one. He's gonna launch from 30, no good. And that does it. Big win for Sexton. They win it, 53-40. Sexton is now four and four overall. 3-0 in the CAAC White. Charlotte drops to 2-1 in league play, 6-2 overall. We'll have post-game stats and analysis after this, after another edition of This Week in High School Sports with John Ross. The winter sports season continues as we're now into 2024. I'm John Ross, and this is This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid. Happy New Year, and welcome back to the winter sports season. Believe it or not, our first basketball district games are just seven and a half weeks away. Let's take you through the rest of the hoop schedule so you know what to expect. And remember, this year the boys' finals will be played first, followed by the girls' finals. Boys' districts will tip off February 26th, with district finals on March 1st. District assignments are already set, and the draw will be posted on February 18th. The regional round will be played March 5th and 7th, with the quarterfinals on Tuesday, March 12th. The Breslin Center in East Lansing will once again play host to the semifinal and final rounds. The semis are March 14th and 15th, with the finals on Saturday, March 16th. All quarterfinal and semifinal action will be streamed live on the NFHS network, and all four finals will air live on Valley Sports Detroit. Munising, Flint Beecher, Ferndale, and Cass Tech will all be looking to repeat as champions. On the girls' side, everything is one week later. So that means district play starts March 4th, regional play starts March 11th. The quarters are March 19th, and the semifinals and finals are March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, also at the Reslin Center. Glen Lake, Hemlock, Lansing Catholic, and Rockford are your defending champs. In addition to the NFHS Network and Valley Sports Detroit, all semifinal and final games for both the boys and girls will also be available on the MHSAA Championship Radio Network. For scores, schedules, pairings, and more, be sure to check out MHSAA.com. It's time for Game Balls when we highlight a trio of standout performances from over the break. First, Ludington's David Schillinger. He poured in 34 points and a 12-point win over Montague. In doing so, Schillinger becomes Ludington's all-time leading scorer, surpassing Mike Larson. 
Ortonville Brandon's Riley Abner also broke a school scoring mark. She went into the break with 1,176 points, more than any other Hooper, boy or girl, has ever scored for the Blackhawks. And despite dropping a game to Buckley, Benzie Central's Jackson Childers won over 1,000 career points. For high school seniors, the matchup of the year isn't on the field. It's actually online. That's right. When you fill out the FAFSA, you know, the free application for federal student aid, you could also be eligible for thousands of dollars in additional money from the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Yep, nearly 80% of students who fill out the FAFSA may be eligible. Now that's a matchup we can all root for. Get started today at michigan.gov slash achievement. The Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. Our weekly Be the Referee feature takes a look at the fine art of officiating with the MHSAA's Director of Officiating Services, Sam Davis. A rule change in high school basketball means there will no longer be one and one free throws. And team fouls now reset after each quarter, not at the half. Here's how it works. A team will reach the bonus in each quarter once their opponent has committed five fouls. That means teams will shoot two free throws for all common fouls after the fourth team foul in a quarter. Previously, teams weren't in the bonus until the seventh team foul, and then shot one and one free throws until the tenth team foul of a half or double bonus was reached. A foul on a three-point attempt will result in three free throws for the shooter and still counts as a team foul. Thanks, Sam. Now more than ever, we need officials. If you're interested, go to the MHSAA website now to register. Seven other winter sports will see their postseason start in February. The ski finals for both boys and girls are February 26th. Team wrestling finals will be February 23rd and 24th in Kalamazoo, with the individual finals March 1st and 2nd at Ford Field. Bowling regionals are February 23rd and 24th, with the finals on March 1st and 2nd. And that's the same weekend as the competitive cheer finals, which will be back at McGurk Arena in Mount Pleasant. The gymnastic finals are March 8th and 9th. The ice hockey finals and Lower Peninsula Boys Swimming and Diving finals are also that weekend. The UP Swim and Dive finals are on February 17th. Information for all of these tournaments and how to get tickets and more can be found at MHSAA.com. You've been listening to This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid, a production of the MHSAA Network. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Ross. And we'll be back next week. Lansing Sports Station. The game, 7.30 a.m. Rock Palm Bush, Eric Doc Love back here at Clayton Co-op Gymnasium. Second floor of Sexton High School. Real good performance tonight by Sexton. They beat Charlotte tonight 53-40 to to move to 3-0 in the CAAC White. Four and four overall. Charlotte drops to six and two overall, two and one in the league. Doubting Industries presentation of high school basketball also brought to you in part by the Lansing Sports Commission. No matter the sport, the Lansing Sports Commission can make your next event your best event. Plan on something greater. Find out more at lansingsports.org. And also by Jeff and Chris Metz and Doubting Industries. If you're wondering what your future holds and you're not going to college, you found out college isn't for you. Check out the future that skilled trades can offer you. You'll be surprised. Check us out at DoubtingIndustries.com. Doc, I think the story of the night, Sexton's full-court pressure defense that was kind of reminiscent of the old days. And when I say the old days, I mean the early 2010s Mm -hmm. when Carlton Valentine was coaching here. Although he liked to use a half-court trap a heck of a lot more than full-court. Nonetheless... The full court trap or, or press was very effective tonight. Yeah, forced a lot of turnovers. Uh, Charlotte uh, had troubles getting out of it, getting into their uh, the half court offense, and then even at times uh, struggled offensively that way too, uh, trying to figure out that uh, that Sexton matchup zone. And uh, Orioles had issues all night long. And uh, Sexton, the J Dubs, come in here, start 2024, and uh, get a big win here at home and uh, improve to three and zero in the white. Yeah, very good performance tonight. We had heard about Keyshawn Somerville. Uh, all season long. Did not score in the first half. He had eight points in the uh, second half. All eight of his points were in the second half, but it wasn't him tonight. It was a total team effort, which is a little bit surprising to me. 
Yeah, they weren't relying on just Somerville. Uh, Murray stepped up, Marquise Murray, Hurley Young off the bench as well. Devon Hodges-Smith with his, with his defense and rebounding. And uh, the big men, well, they're good passing. Uh, Dequarius Jones and Jabralyn Chandler, uh, both those guys out of that high post able to either score or find their teammates. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And also, free throw shooting. Charlotte, 8 for 15 tonight. Sexton, 8 for 10. They made they were 8 for 8, and then they have, they missed those last two. Yeah, Marquise Murray missed his last two free throws. Uh, but uh, uh, just a terrific job from the free throw line. Uh, yeah, I mentioned the free throws. 37 rebounds for Charlotte. Sexton had 29. Uh, Charlotte did out-rebound him tonight. but um, So that just shows you sometimes stats... Don't mean a darn thing. Yeah, sometimes the, it's misleading. Most of the times you think, oh, the team won and rebounding them. They probably won the ball game. It didn't happen this time. Nope, it didn't. And and Sexton, frankly, the better team pretty much all night long. Charlotte made a couple of runs here and there uh, right at the start of uh, the uh, second quarter mm -hmm. and then right at the start of the fourth quarter, but it just did not happen for them tonight. Cutler Brandt was Charlotte's leading scorer tonight, but he struggled tonight, Doc. He led him with 15 points, but he missed four free throws tonight, and he really had trouble against the aggressive Sexton defense. He only made three field goals. Uh, uh, he was three for 17 shooting. Mm. Um, so all those three were three-point shots, by the way, too. Yep. So uh, the, the Sexton defense uh, did a number on him. Evan Koloski was the only other player in double-figure scoring. He had 11 points and eight rebounds. He was solid all night long. Ben Buzzard, their other leading scorer, he only had four points tonight. I think that was a story tonight. He did have 13 rebounds and was aggressive underneath, but only four points. You want to beat Sexton, your second leading scorer has got to do more than that. Yeah, he had four points, and they all came in the fourth quarter, too. A.J. Spencer Spratlin, three points, one rebound. Carson Burkampas, two points, three rebounds, saddled with foul trouble. Otherwise, he'd have been more effective. Picked up a lot of foul, picked up two fouls in the first half, and then picked up two fouls quickly in the second half and couldn't play, uh, wasn't just not nearly uh, as effective. Grayson Sievolt did not score, but he had a rebound. Tyler Bowser did not score. He had a rebound. Christian Powers didn't score either. He had a rebound. Aiden, Aiden Laverty did not score. He had three rebounds, so 37 rebounds as a team, eight for 15 from the free throw line, and they committed six fouls in the first three quarters combined. They committed eight fouls in the fourth quarter by itself. Yeah, don't forget Malachi Garza. He had five points and five rebounds on this one, too. Oh, so. I missed him. I'm sorry. Yep. Malachi Garza, five points, five rebounds. That's right. Two for four from the free throw, and he did have one uh, field goal on the night. For Sexton, mentioned it, eight for 10 from the free throw line. Even though they got out rebounded tonight, by 8, 37-29. I think they'll take the victory yeah. uh, instead. They were led in scoring tonight by Marquise Murray. He had 14 points and five rebounds. He was the only one in double figures, but a lot of eight points here. Keyshawn Somerville, eight points, two rebounds. Hurley Young, who I thought was excellent off the bench when a couple of their guys had a couple of early fouls. Hurley Young, eight points and five rebounds. Joe Pizzo, solid as well. The team's quarterback during football season. Eight points, five rebounds. Devin Hodges-Smith, seven points, five rebounds. Jabrilion Chandler, six points, two rebounds. You mentioned the passes that he was able to make. Dequarius Jones, two points, two rebounds. Again, passing uh, for him was very good uh, as well. Kevon Brown didn't score but had two rebounds. Troy Bell didn't score. He had one rebound as well. I think I got everybody. Yeah. So the eight for 10 from the line, 29 rebounds as a team. Sexton wins it tonight, 53 to 40. Again, they lead the CAAC White with a 3-0 record. They are 4-4 four four, uh, overall. Charlotte, 2-1 in league play, 6-2 overall, but they play once again later on this season down at the Oriole Dome in Charlotte. So Charlotte will have uh, revenge on their mind mm -hmm. when they play uh, down there. That should be a heck of a ball game when they play down there. We'll go over uh, players of the game and tell you what's coming up. Oh, yeah, by the way, tomorrow, High School Rewind, 10 a.m. until 11 the weekly show that recaps the week that was in boys and girls basketball. Very likely be joined by the first-year head coach for Sexton, DeLeon Deering. And also Brian Calloway, prep sports editor of the Lansing State Journal. He was here uh, earlier tonight. And uh, so that's what's coming up, 10 to 11, recapping the week that was in boys and girls basketball. Back to wrap it up after this on the game, 730 AM WVFN and the Lansing Sports Network. Oh, yeah. There's Pistons basketball coming up tonight in just uh, under an hour, 9.35 tonight. The Pistons continuing their West Coast road trip against Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and the Golden State Warriors. We'll tell you more about that on the other side. This is the game, 7.30 AM WVFN. Sexton over Charlotte tonight, 53-4. to 
Where can you find good information on all kinds of topics related to the well-being of our student athletes? Check out the health and safety page of the MHSA website. Learn about multi-sport participation, heat and hydration, cardiovascular resources, as well as insurance benefits available for our students. It's all on the health and safety page of MHSAA.com. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. WVFN. Back one final time at Sexton High School, Clayton Kolak Gymnasium. As I look to my right, the Sexton High School Hall of Fame, the plaques are up here to our right. Very nice. Uh, that's got dedicated just a few years ago mm-hmm. and looking very nice here at historic Sexton High School. Uh, they're turning the lights out on us, but they can't let us go yet uh, because we got to finish up here. Sexton uh, beats Charlotte tonight 53-40. to First uh, players of the game. Uh, I thought for Charlotte, um, even though Cutler Pratt led them scoring, I thought Evan Koloski was the better Oriole overall tonight. Uh, 11 points, uh, 8 rebounds, had 3 assists as well. It just seemed like he was a little bit more involved uh, overall, defensively and offensively in this ball game, and then for Sexton, you know, this one's a tough one for me. I think I might just go Marquise Murray. Yeah, I agree with you. Fourteen points, five rebounds, two assists, four steals as well. I just think he, uh, he had a great game overall too. Uh, he he caused a lot of turnovers, not necessarily just getting the steals. He had four, but just his presence overall forced some other turnovers too. So I thought, uh, you know, he was player of the game for me. Yeah, I, no argument there uh, as well. Coming up tomorrow, High School Rewind. Recapping the week that was in high in uh, boys and girls high school basketball. Uh, De Leon Deering, the first-year head coach of Sexton, very likely going to be coming on about 10.20 tomorrow. And then Brian Calloway, the prep sports editor of the Lansing State Journal, going to join me about 10.40 uh, or so for his weekly segment. Coming up next week, the first of potential three meetings this season for the Warriors from Waverly, led by Deontay Pfeiffer and Derek Thomas II against the best team in the area, and by some people's accounts, maybe the best team in the state in all classes, the undefeated East Lansing Trojans. CAAC Blue matchup. Both teams undefeated right now in league play. So tentatively, we'll be there coming up next Thursday night at East Lansing High School. Uh, We'll hit the air at 7 o'clock like we normally do, and uh, really looking forward uh, to uh, that one. We'll talk more about that coming up uh, tomorrow. Plus, uh, another big game I want to mention next week on the girls' side, Mm -hmm. Portland at Lansing Catholic. Lansing Catholic doesn't have a great record. They're only 500 right now. But the teams that they've lost to, I mean, they have uh, lost to really, really uh, good teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, Portland, uh, the uh, Thalen sisters, Malia and Lily, have been terrific so far for Coach Jason Hayes. So I'm going to be there at that one. That's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday night game. But we'll be at... Uh, East Lansing High School for Waverly at East Lansing Boys. So, that's going to do it for us here. And over here, coming up at 9.35, it's Detroit Pistons basketball continuing their West Coast road trip in San Francisco, California against uh, Steph Curry, future Hall of Famer, Clay Thompson, future Hall of Famer, and the Golden State Warriors. That's coming up at 9.35 with Mark Champion and Rick Mahorn. Great to be back after the holiday break, uh, Doc. And it's going to be weekly right up until the end of the regular season. So looking forward to some good action around the mid-Michigan area. Thanks to Nathan Vandenberg for helping us get on the air tonight. And uh, great job as always, Doc. You too. For Eric Doc Love, I'm Brock Palmbush. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to your trusted source for high school sports coverage, the game 730 AM WVFN, and the Lansing Sports Network. Your final score one final time. The Sexton J-Dubs 53, the Charlotte Orioles 40. We now join ESPN Radio already in progress on the game 730 AM WVFN. Good night, everybody.